be advised, you are coming in weak and unreadable. Say again, Con Tower. This is Hacho. Do you read me, O? Hacho, this is Con Tower. I read you Lima Charlie. Con Tower, Con Tower. Request permission to launch and commence the field off. Over. Stand by. Hacho, permission granted. Say again, permission granted. Hacho that. Launching podcast in three, two. You are now entering the field up with your host, Pacho Correa, Chief Warrant Officer 3, United States Marine Corps, retired. Get some. Hurrah! Get some. Hurrah! What's going on? Interwebs, how are you? Happy Baby Friday, or what's the other one I call it? Friday Eve, as we like, uh, as I like to call it as well. Well, welcome back. We got a great show for you. Another week has almost gone. Thank baby Jesus sitting on his manger, wearing a tuxedo shirt, all that good stuff. We got a great show for you today, folks. Before, but before we kick it, you know, I like to do the do and basically say that, hey, this show represents and it's all about, you know, freedom of speech as well as uh, the Second Amendment. Because I, as well as most of you listeners on, on you know, on here, uh, we protected uh, this, the Constitution and this great nation of ours. We did a lot of things in the name of freedom. So the show is all about that. So what does that mean? Is that, hey, if you like the show, stick around. Listen, listen to me bump my gums for the next half hour or so. But if not, then perhaps go listen, you know, swipe left and move move on. And here's, here's something. It's a lot of good shows on sitchradio.com as well as, you know, many other podcasts. And support, support you podcasters, okay? So... And this show is also brought to you by Castle Global Services. Castle Global Services is one of our official is our official sponsor. Hey, do you ever wish you could have control on you know who is your electricity provider? Well, go to Castle Global Services on their and on their residential on their resident services tab on the on the residential. You go in there and they have uh, one of the options you have is choose who your if your state allows it who you know and control your your electrical bill. So go in there and sign up. And take take back control of your uh, electricity bill and feel like you have you know you have control over it. All right. With that being said, let's kick off this show. So today's show is uh, expectation versus reality in regards to joining the service. Among you know, and there's also a lot of things, and I guess we can apply this uh, to life as well. But I know I remember uh, we. When I first came in uh, to the Marine Corps back in the early 90s, or uh, some of you youngsters would say, you know, before Jesus Christ was a PFC, ha, 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 all that good shit. No, nah, but, you know, one of the reasons not, why I joined the service was not only because I had, uh, uh, you know, obviously we've all seen Heartbreak Ridge uh, and A Few Good Men. As as many other movies, uh, you know, that represents the Marine Corps in a in a in a really awesome manner. <clears throat> uh, you know, one of the reasons why I joined the service is us. You know, again, the uniform and and watching all these movies. So obviously, we you know we think that we have this romantic view and idea that we're going to come into the the service or or whatever branches that you're joining. But you know, for me as a Marine, it was man, I'm, we're going to go in there, kick ass, take names, all that good stuff. And sometimes it, things don't pan out that way. Um, as I was going through MCT and my be- my best friend, Kenny, or my brother from another mother, as I like to call him, uh, he, and I remember we were both in MCT and I was thinking of changing my, my MOS. I had watched, it was an Amtracker video I don't know if they still do this at in MCT, but you know they would, you know you would go to this, uh, you know we were in the field. They would show you this really cool video, you know of Amtracker and infantry and all this shit and uh hurrah hurrah get some bark bark wolf wolf. And I was like, dude, I'm I'm I think I'm really gonna go do it. I'm I'm gonna go switch. I'm gonna you know be an Amtracker infantry or whatever, and. Um, kick ass, take names, and get all the glories, write books, and all that good shit. And Ken was like, dude, you know, you are where you want, what, where you are, you know, this is kind of paraphrasing the conversation, but he was like, dude, you are where you need to be. Uh, you know, I think you got a good career field, just like I chose uh, to be an uh, in, in admin, and I think we got to, we make good career choices. Let's just stick with this and see how it plays out, and so on and so forth. Then, 
which it did. 100% love it. Love being a, you know, Moto T grease monkey. I know he loved, you know, his, his, his time in the Marine Corps and the jobs in the places that he went. So, you know, with that being said, I think, you know, we, we, um, you know, we have this romantic view of what is it, what is it like to be in, in the service versus, you know, the reality of things. And as we were going through boot camp, I mean, and all these follow on schools, yeah, obviously you have a hand, you know, in boot camp, obviously your, your handlers are your, excuse me, your drill instructors, you know, those, 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 uh, folks, um, you know, the God bless, God bless what they did because at some point in time, it, yes, initially they're they're training you all this and that. But once you get into a pattern and you move from phase one to phase two in the boot camp, in boot camp, I mean, they're more. They, you know, they take you from point A to point B. Then they sit in the back, you know, getting ready. You know, doing other things to prepare you for the next evolution of uh, you know part of your training evolution and such. Um, but you're, you know, you're being told what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and all that good stuff, right? Then from there, you kind of move on to MCT, where you still have uh, platoon commanders and, um, you know, OIC, platoon OIC, and you know, these folks are still telling you what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and all that stuff. And it's very regimented. Whereas I know it was for me when I when I first hit when I hit the fleet, um, yeah, to some degree I had. Folks tell me, you know, how to do it, when to do it, and all that good stuff. But the majority of of, of the things were were on me. I mean, I had a life uh, in after you know my weekends weren't as regimented as uh, as I was in in these formal schools where I, I had an individual, you know, where I had duty and I mean and and all these things where my time was very valuable and still regimented. You know, so I mean, I had a normal life except for. For what we, um, you know, for non you for you non military types, you know, we had duty where you're basically, and during the weekend or even during the week, you're in your uniform, or whatever, and uh, you're answering calls, logging in stuff, and in, in this book and stuff. So we call that duty or fire watch for those of you. So aside from having all you know duty, I mean, I had a normal life. I had a you know uh you know my weekends off and my time to myself whatever it's like i'm not saying and a lot of you may may shoot me for what i'm about to say but it was like a regular job but not really in that sense uh i'm just trying to relate you know make it relatable as much as i can so but I initially you know when i first hit the fleet i mean i really enjoyed uh, you know, the regimental lifestyle, like, hey, you know, you free, hey, devil dog, hey, Marie, ah, 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 bark, bark, woof, woof, all, you know. In that aspect, you know, when I hit the fleet, it was just, oh, uh, where, what happened to all that? And, you know, my platoon mates and, you know, we're, you know, we're doing all these things and, uh, you know, where's the drill instructor? Where's the, you know, the handler from, from Marine co Combat Training? And, all those things. So you kind of get in this mentality and then you hit the fleet and now it's just, it's kind of like on you. And then, yeah, you have these things like fire watch or um, working parties. And for those of you who are non-service member types, a working party, it's not a party whatsoever. And you're not, I mean, you are working and busting your ass, but there's nothing party like, uh, I don't even know why the fuck they call it that to be quite honest, but you know, you're doing these uh, volunteer, volunteer non-volunteer related type of jobs, uh, you know, like rake, picking up trash uh, with a, with, uh, again, I guess it's a party because misery loves company, but, or you're raking leaves and doing all these mundane different type of jobs. Uh, and it's like, dude, where's all the, you know, where's the combat? Where's all the glory? Where's all, where are all these things that, you know, we're ingrained or being into our heads, you know, while we went through all these schools that uh, where's all that stuff. But the reality of things is that you, you know, you're there, you show up you, and then so you do your training or you work. If you're if you're a motor transport like I was, I mean, you're you're maintaining the vehicle readiness. Uh, so that way that unit is able to deploy with its vehicles. 
you know, and, and their vehicles. So the vehicles need to be in a, in a high state of readiness. Readiness meaning ready to go and deploy or uh, to an austere environment, wherever, you know, U.S. Um, calls us uh, or, bre you know, breaks glass in, ca in case of emergency. Uh, or, you know, for the admin folks, hey, high state of readiness for, you know, the service members that their wills are, and power of attorneys and all those things that require before you go anywhere that you have to do uh, prior to deploying that, you know, obviously they're also in a high, that that admin unit is in a high state of readiness and, and, and that service members are deployable and ready to go, that all these things in the back end are taken care of so they they can just go at, at, on a, you know at a moment's notice is the bottom line. Same thing with all the other jobs that you do in the in the service. So you know you 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 know you do all these things to maintain high readiness and so on and so forth. And obviously for those those of us who are you know infantry is not our daily job so to speak because every marine is a basic rifleman and all Marines here have, you know, have gone to multiple field exercises. And that's basically where we're, we're really training for, you know, for whatever it is that we're going to do, whether it's a, field, you know, a communication exercise, we're honing our skills and perfecting how to provide communications to a unit, whether you're, you know, you're, it's field exercise on how to provide logistical packages and, uh, and conduct, uh, uh, evacuations of you know folks, whatever the case may be. I mean, we yeah, we've we've all done those. But aside from the folks who are you know who are in infantry, who basically they clean weapons all day, maintain again, it all everything has a purpose, uh, and it's all about maintaining high readiness, uh, state of readiness to go to go anywhere. You know, there it, there is a romantic side of you that thinks that hey man, I'm joining the service, and it's all about like like I see in the movies, bang bang. You know, butter butter jam. You know, deploy grenades. Oh, I'm gonna jump on a fucking grenade and save it. It's not like that. You know, there are aspects of it that that are real. And yes, you know, when com when when shit hits the fan and you are in combat uh, or in an austere environment with, you know, with hazards and risk and danger. And all those things, yes, all those things come into play, or sometimes not. I mean, I can, I remember multiple deployments that, you know, a lot of the times it was it wasn't like that. I mean, yes, that danger existed, the the risk and threat was there, but sometimes, you know, you're out there. I mean, I hate to put it sometimes like Forrest Gump. You know, we're out there looking for this guy named Charlie. And we never found them, you know. I mean, that's my shitty vote, my Tom, my shitty Tom Hanks uh, Forrest Gump voice. But in, in for all sense and purposes, I mean, we were, at, you know, some of us drove around uh, a lot of times, and you know, we we didn't encounter anything. I mean, yeah, some of us may, may might have hit some IEDs, some explosions, or hell. I mean, I remember driving, you know, in my, you know, sometimes and somebody shooting at us. Some, you see some pops and you hear and a contact who the fuck were we shooting at i mean to be quite honest so you know you're out there looking for for these things so yeah there, there is that reality aspect of it but also there's also the aspect that you may need you know you may deploy and you have all the widgets in in the mix in the equation hey there's threat there's this there's that but hey you know you might have just gone that entire deployment and you've gone outside the wire done your logistical patch, whatever it is, and nothing really happened. Most of the time, to be quite honest, we're fighting ourselves and we're fight, fighting complacency. Um, so, you know, what do I mean? What do I mean by that is that just like in Roman times, after the Roman, one of the things that, uh, that centurions and, you know, you know, senior high ranking officers during Roman times, what they would do is after they went in into a city, invaded or fought with the enemy and won, they would put the soldiers to work and to rebuild that city uh, where they just got done, you know, pillaging and doing their, their stuff. Why? One, it, it prevented, uh, you know, additional 
you know, obviously, and, and things are going to happen in, in addition to collateral damage, whether it was soldiers getting bored, beating up the local, you know, the local pop in a population, uh, you know, taking advantage of the women, whatever the case may be, you know, just to prevent an, any additional incidents. That's what they did to keep them busy because idle, idle hands is the devil's playground as well as idle mind is the devil's playground, you know, prevent suicides and, and so, so on and so forth. So, same thing here. Same thing. I mean, that shit still doesn't change. So, you know, a lot, a lot of times, we you know, as leaders, we're fighting complacency and downtime. So that's why we, you know, we would keep soldiers and Marines, you know, b- busy doing, you know, just mundane minutia and bullshit uh, to prevent additional incidents. And, and, and things did, did still happen. And people are, you know, would commit stupid stuff. So, you know, the reality, again, going circling back to what I'm saying is that the reality of joining the service, sometimes a lot of us, we have this ex- high expectancy that we're going to do all these things. Uh, but in reality, it, it really, it, it really isn't, you know, same thing. It, uh, later on in my lifetime, I joined, uh, I decided to go the Warners around and grow, you know, growing up in the, in, in, in the ranks, you see the a, a term of endearment. Uh, for warrant officers, in, in most in some units, is gunner, and in reality, a gunner is is an is a, a warrant officer or a chief warrant officer that that came from through the ranks in the in in the infantry side, and he's a master of arms. This dude, uh, usually at an infantry unit, and the guy knows anything and everything about you know weapons deployment and you know and placement and so on and so forth, but. You know, I don't know why I got adopted on the on on the other warrant officers as a gunner. It's just a fraternal endearment. I didn't like it in particular because I I was not a gunner. You know, I re- have re- high respect for those individuals, and there's a reason why they call them that. So I just prefer that. Hey, just call me, you know, sir or chief warrant officer, whichever. Or you know, if it's if it's your boss, your colonel, they will call you by your first name. So, anyways, getting back to what I'm saying is that, you know, here I am. You know, as a warrant officer, and I think you know, because growing up, I saw the you know the warrant officer. Hey, you never mess with with him. The dude chewed, used to chew ass, both enlisted and officer. I mean, that guy used to break break his foot on other officers. I mean, to the point where they're probably coughing up some toe jam. You know, after he got done chewing a captain or lieutenant's ass, so I was like, oh fuck yeah, that's what I want to do. You know, but the reality of it is, is that when I transition into into those ranks it's nothing like that and you know it's very political you're advocating for your not only for your platoon excuse me but you're also advocate depending on where you're placed at you know you're also advocating for your equipment the other the other platoons or the other companies that you may be in charge of as well as you know you're advocating for your uh your community as a whole the, uh, you know as for me, it was motor transport and logistics. So it was far from, you know, chewing ass and arguing and this and that and just walking away and being disrespectful. One thing that um, Scott, Gil- Scott Mad Max Gilman, who some of you may have met uh, on my show, uh, you know, he was not only was he a personal friend of mine when I first came back, because I got out, I came back in into Marine Corps, but the dude was also... Um, my mentor in the community and one of the, one of the reasons and good positive influences I had of why I became a, a warrant officer and, you know, an advice that he gave me and that to this day, I, I will never forget is, Hey man, you know, now that you're, you're one of us, it's great. Congratulations. But, and there's a lot of, a lot of power, a lot of responsibility, but just remember one thing, the ass you chew today might be the ass you kiss tomorrow. Again, the ass you chew today might be the ass you kiss tomorrow. He said, you know, you're going to run into situations where, you know, you may be right. Um, you know, you'll have young lieutenants, captains, hell, even majors that, uh, you know, may present themselves and, you know, you really, you know, you can, yeah. and you have, you know, you have that power or I guess, uh, that leverage, but just be careful, you know, when, how you use that, how you use that, because in the end, those folks are going to move on. They may be, they'll become, you know, 
you know, they'll rise through the ranks and one day you may run into that individual and you set them up for success and and left him a bad taste in his mouth with with our community that he may have, you know, an axe to grind with other warrant officers and where he may not be as open to listen to our advice because we are advisors on of our communities. And, you know, how can this guy ever listen to another warrant officer because you're the one who set him up for failure late earlier in his career. So, you know, that's one that, so that was a very, you know, reality check for me that, oh shit, it's not all about a, a come here there, young devil dog or young Lieutenant and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, bark, bark, woof, woof. You know, it, it was far from that. So, you know, and hell, here's another uh, reality check. Uh, you know, I thought that was going to go to when I went to the basic school where all officers go in Quantico that, hey, I'm just going to go over there, do my thing, go to my my other my my job school and then come back to the fleet. And, yay, you know, high fives to me. I'm back in the fleet. No, nope, wasn't like that. I mean, hell, I was actually doing fire watch as a warrant officer with other warrant officers. We were doing fire watch like PFCs, wearing wearing vests, walking around the barracks, you know, may, you know, hey, it's past 10 o'clock, shut up, you know, close the doors, blah, blah. I mean, like, like I was a PFC, you know, a PFC in the Marine Corps. And I was like, what the fuck, man? You know, I was I was in the streets as a as a recruiter, driving around, you know, my govy with a pack of cards, you know, talking to people, shaking hands, kissing babies. Hey, you want to be a Marine? No. All right, next. And now I'm back, you know, it's, it was just a reality check and, you know, put me, you know, you know, put me down a couple of notches. Um, so it's like, man, why the hell am I even doing this? What, you know, where, where's, where's all the glory? Where's all the good shit? You know, the, Hey, sir. And the salutes and all that stuff. Or even as a, when I came, when I hit the fleet as a young Marine, Hey man, where's, where's all the guns, the firefights, the shooting, the, the, the romance, you know, the romanticism of that I was going to be a war hero and all that good stuff. Where's all that? It isn't. So, you know, kind of, you know, bringing it all full circle to a lot of us, it's a huge letdown, you know, that fuck, you know, it's, it's not even like this. It's, Oh wow. This is somewhat like, like a job for real. So, you know, the reality of things is, or, you know, and then, so a lot of us, you know, we, we, and depending on the job and there's, and if you, if you're, if you don't like what you're doing and you don't like your job or whatever it was that you're doing, because you're doing many different things, not to what your expectations were. A lot of people just decided and they get out or, you know, early in their career after it, they'll do their four years, move on to other things. And that's it. That, you know, that was, and, and you know, the, they may, may, I mean, even to me, I mean, Hey, you still serve, you were still part of that. You know, very small percentage of the population that pretty much, as I mentioned before in other podcasts, that hey, you raise your right hand um, and said, hey, in America, go ahead. I'm going to give you a blank check with my life that you can cash at any point in time because I'm going to answer the call no matter where it is uh, or what it is, and it, even if that means giving my life in order in order to guarantee your freedom and your safety. So, you know, a lot of us think that it's going to be like that and. You know, sometimes sometimes it isn't. So you know, we we get out. Some people get out. Hell, a lot of us who have been to combat uh, and we transition out because at some point in time our career is going to end, whether we get out or whether we retire. And a lot of us have a hard time transitioning back because we no longer, you know, out in the private sector sector we don't have that expect. You know, we don't have. That camaraderie, the you know brothers or sisters right next to us, looking you know looking over to that one person in the field exercise, and you're both miserable, and or somebody say, hey fucker, by the way, fucker is a is a very, it's a real term you can look it up in any dictionary, uh, it's a term of endearment endearment uh, for our service members. Uh, hey fucker, come on over here, man, you know have a beer, whatever. That no longer make the case may be. Um, and because of you know obviously PTSD and other things, a lot of us end up coming committing suicide because we have no the expect we we associate. I know I did. Um, I, I associated myself uh, with you know with my with my weapon. So uh, you know 
when I when I when I had a break in my my breakdown and I was you know I was I almost committed suicide but I was you know I had ideations and I had a plan and all those things um, but I you know when I came again Scott Gilman stepped in he you know he intervened and got me the help I needed you know one of the things was hey they took my weapons card um, you know because obviously they didn't want me to go check out my nine mil out of the armory and try to suck start that bitch somewhere in, in Camp Pendleton. Obviously that, you know, they're trying to prevent you from doing something stupid like that. But I was like, fuck, you know, if I don't have my weapons card and I can't draw my weapon, then what am I? I'm not a Marine because every Marine is a basic rifleman. We, that's how we, you know, it's kind of like, you know, in the movie 300, when Leonidas standing right before, uh, right in front of um, Xerxes, and you know the guy narrating says you know his you know his his shield was heavy you know he grabs his lance and he chucks it and you know he misses because you know he the guy he didn't have he was on balance because of his shield but that's how a lot of us associate associate ourselves as hey we're this you know this warrior and now we're just joe working at this company and that's a hard pill to fucking swallow people that that's a huge reality check for us and that a lot of us can't, you know, can't process it. And obviously either we end up, you know, making stupid, this, I don't want to say stupid, but we end up making not very healthy cho life choices. We start chasing that high of being deployed. We, and, or we, we get into risky relationships. We start having affairs, you know, multiple, you know, with multiple people on protect, you know, doing drugs, um, getting uh, buying fast you know getting into, into uh, motorcycles and and going super fast or even vehicles and that we again we start making these choices that we because we can't we don't know how to vocalize that fuck you know what am i doing those are the reality and of of things uh on the real side on the real uh on the real world so you know we have these expectations that we have to learn how to hey you know what this is not what i expected in this sense however i do have you know, I do have other venues where I can let out or I could talk to people. And that's where you should be talking to your leadership and leaning on them. Hey, staff, Aaron, you know, I was I thought I was going to, you know, I thought I was going to be kicking ass, taking names. And hopefully the, that leader will, will say, hey, yes, you know, that that may be the case. And that is still uh, a very high likeliness and possibility that you could go to combat. This, these things are going to. However. You know, there's also things that we need to do on the back end before, you know, you know, before we even get to answer America's 911 call. So uh, any hell, even as, a, as an officer, because even as, a, as, as an officer, as you're entering the ranks and uh, as a young officer, you're still going to have an individual, an enlisted advisor that, you know, and hopefully that that leader shit even even as as a warrant officer i mean i had my ma my master gunnery sergeant you know uh shout out to ezra banal in texas i mean because of this guy you know i leaned on him all the time and i'm like mass you know master guns shit you know i thought that this was gonna be you know like this and he was like, well, no sir uh you know we it you gotta do it like this because it you know, so on and so forth. And by the way, you don't have to be the guy that does everything all the fucking time. That's why you have staff sergeants that want to show you what they can do or whatever the case may be. But, you know, you should lean on your, on those leaders and those folks who've been around and they can bring that experience, their past experience onto the table and, and hopefully you can get a, per, a better perception of things. So that way, you know, we don't get bored with what we do or, um, uh, what is it? Uh, I was shit. I was talking about it earlier, but I, you know, I'm drawing a blank. But uh, that way, you know, boredom doesn't set in, and and we start making you know other other choices, and then we just like or we leave the service, and we're like, fuck it, you know what? You know, it sucked uh, because of X Y Z. Where hey, we needed to realize that hey, it's you know the expect expectations maybe one thing, however. On the other side, there are other things in reality and in the back end that you need to be able to accept and, and cope with because things don't always play out the, the way we want it. Not on the, not in the service and not in you know, not even beyond you know beyond the service or in, in real life, I guess if you want to put it in those terms as it is. 
and you know kind of roping it all everything together that's why where you lean in lean on your on your friends people who've been in the service before you know other other mentors and being open about it and talking about it and saying yeah, uh, and letting them know where where you're at and how you're feeling. So that way, hopefully, it'll make you, it'll give you a different perspective, and and you can see things from a different level. And you can say, oh, okay, got it. And it's much easier, much easier to process. So, you know, that's what it is. I want to give a shout out to my my former roommate, my first roommate when I hit the fleet, Caesar Sterling. I think he's listening to the show. Shout out to you, my boy. Uh, I miss you. I need to bring you on the show so we can talk shit about some of the good times that you and I had and a lot of bad things that I learned from you and Sinet, who was my other roommate. I also want to give a shout out to uh, my buddy, Jorge. Jorge, hey, thanks a lot, brother. You sent me this really cool pen uh, as a gift. Uh, they call these the the, the gun pens. I, I mean, it, you know, it looks like like a bullet. And you lock it in and all that good shit. So I want to say, hey, thanks, brother. Uh, you really didn't have to. Love you. Thanks for supporting the show. And before I punch out, I just, just want to say that, hey, if you've been struggling with anything in life, uh, transitioning or just, you know, marinating and ruminating on a bunch of other shit, uh, don't be afraid to reach out. Shout out to you, Ken. Oorah, get some, bitch. I just talked about you earlier. Uh, so, but if you've been struggling with with things, um, and you know you don't know you don't know what to do, everything has a solution. Reach out to me. Reach out to a buddy. Reach out on military Tricare or mili- uh, One Source VA. Or re- just reach out. And for those of you who haven't heard from a buddy for a while, fucking give do a buddy check. Hey man, quick text. I'm just doing a con check. Give me a quick Lima Charlie, a loud and clear that that you you're still here. And if hey, if you got anything you want to weigh in on you. I'm here fucking, you know, reply back. Let me know that you're alive, bro. Just do that. Do that for me because the bottom line is that we don't want anybody to be part of the 22 and the, the 22 Marine statistics that kill themselves a day. I don't be doing fucking push-ups for, you know, nah, I want you alive. I want you here. So anyways, we got a lot of, just FYI, we got a lot of good shit coming planned for this show. So if you're into, into cryptocurrency, NFT, non-fun, non-fungible um, tokens, NFTs, Hey, this is coming down the pipeline with this show uh, and cryptocurrency and moving on to different uh, platforms and just growing the show. So if you're into all that good shit, hey, tune in. But with that being said, folks, yeah, I just want to thank you for tuning in. Pass, you know, like and subscribe, share, pass me around like I joined at a party and recommend me. All right. But with that being said, hoorah, get some. I am out of here. Peace.